So once you have your uh, needle or whatever you're using for substitute prepared, um, go ahead and take the other end of the cord and your whip, and I'll try to go through this um, as slow as possible. So you're gonna take it and cross it over like this. You can leave about an inch sticking out. Cross it over diagonally and you're gonna go around the back. Come around and form an X. Just like that. And when you're starting these knots, don't uh, try not to do it super tight. You want to leave it kind of loose. So, anyway, um, now don't leave it too loose or it'll pop loose like that. So, come around and come down to make an X. Alright, so come around the base. And hold that with your finger there. Now, at this point, we're going to go under, I'm sorry, we're going to go over this first strand and go under this strand here where we started. And make sure as you pull through, you pull out any twist in your strand. So make sure that this strand you just pulled through, it stays at the bottom here. And basically with a 5x4, what we're attempting to do is create a square up top. That's why it's a 5x4. The 4 means that there's 4 sides to the top and bottom. So we have uh, 2 sides of our square done on top. <clears throat> so now we're going to come, after we made that pass, we're just going to wrap it down around again. And this time we're going to go under this strand. So when we started, see this strand here? We're just going to go under with that as well. Along on the right side of it. Okay. So once you've done that pass, then we're going to actually, we're going to cross over right here to form a little triangle here and we're gonna rotate this and you can see where this strand here how it goes under this strand we're gonna go under this strand here okay so um, starting from here you see this this strand follow it around and it goes under and then after it goes under this strand, we're going to go under it right here. And make sure that when you pull it tight, that you get a third side of your square up top here. And it looks something like that. Don't worry about getting it perfect just yet. Just get a rough shape. So we just went under. So now, we're going to go over, you can see how we have two strands here that go under this one strand. By the time we're done with this knot, we don't want to have any strands that are crossed over or under two times in a row. It's always under, over, under, over. So we're going to go over this middle strand, come up straight up between these and split this and go under just like that now this part down here it's gonna be a little bit loose so don't pull too tight yet so once we've done that we'll turn the knot over so you have this starting strand in the back. Alright, so next what we're going to do is we're going to go over this loose strand on top here. 
and then the strand that's right underneath it, we're going to go under, just like that. And then after we've done that, we're just going to come down splitting strands again. So we're going to follow down between these two strands here. So you can see this strand goes over, um, goes over two strands in a row. So we're going to go over it, come down, and then down under here where this loose part is, Push that over and you'll see a little strand laying in there. We're going to bring that up and go under it. And then go over this loose strand here that we had from before. And just get any twists out of that. Again, don't pull too tight. And now we're just going to start back where this strand does. So just go under right beside it. And that is, you have completed your uh, 5x4 Turk's head knot. Now, that, this is just one pass, meaning that we went around once. This is going to be a two pass. So, um, before I go any further, uh, remember I said about the square. This is kind of sloppy right now, so we want to straighten things out here. So, pull this over. And you want to get each side of the square just on top the edge of your knot, or of the heel knot foundation. And you can close it in just a little bit. So... You want it to look about like that on top. Now around the sides here, <clears throat> um, you can get kind of try to work out the squares slightly. Don't worry about it too much. Um, if there's anything major, like you know, if this was pushed all the way up, like right next to a strand like that, then space that out. But um, get it to look about like this. And this is the main reason why you want to leave your strand somewhat loose as you're tying the knot so that way you can work with it once we finish the knot completely we can go through and tighten it so to do a second pass and even a third pass if you want on bigger heel knot foundations all you have to do is follow your lead strand from the first pass so we're not gonna have to really think anymore um, you just do whatever it does so it just came under so we went under it's gonna go over we're gonna go over you just follow it along on its right side all the way until you finish so it goes under we go under and you want the strands to be right up side by side as if it was one strand so come around it goes over we'll go over it goes under we go under. It's all easy going from here now. Alright, so we'll just do this the rest of the way. Take your time even with this part. Sometimes um, you might mistake another strand for your lead strand. Just make sure, always check that you're following it. So we've completed the second side of our square, so we're halfway done with this second pass. And again, make sure you pull any twists out of your strand.
And if you're ever wanting to tie one of these knots for a full size whip, um, you'll obviously need to do at least one more pass if this was, say, a six foot bull whip. Um, usually, what I, the general rule of thumb that I follow for a five by four knot is cut out two feet of paracord per pass. So if I want to know how much paracord I need for a three pass five by four Turks head knot on a six foot bull whip, um, as long as the heel knot foundation isn't um, larger than normal, then I'll just cut two feet of paracord for one pass. So if it's a three pass, then I'll need six feet of paracord. Alright, so we're back at the bottom here, and we're just going to come under where we would go alongside our lead strand, only this time there's two strands, so now looks like we're going to do a third pass, but we're not, we're just going to stop there, and that is our two pass 5x4 Turks knot. Now it looks kind of sloppy, there's some gaps, that's fine, uh, we're going to work everything out, so... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Just like that. So, uh, what we're going to do is just make sure everything's evened out. There's no excessive bunching. You can see how we have our square on top here. And you can just push things around to cover up those gaps, even out the passes of the paracord. Now, once we actually start pulling things tight, that's going to give it even more coverage. If for some reason it doesn't, then just cut um, another foot, maybe foot and a half, maybe another foot and a half of paracord, and you can do a third pass. Um, with these micro whips, you know, I said with a full size whip, you usually need two feet per pass, but with this micro whip, I only need a foot and a half. So, uh, anyways, once or now that we have it all evened out, we're just gonna pull the slack out of the knot. So, we're just gonna follow through the knot, pulling any slack. And make sure that at the bottom here, the paracord is just uh, caught under the foundation of the heel knot. So that way, it'll give you more coverage up here. If you keep it, like if you keep the strands pushed all the way down like that, off of the knot foundation, uh, you won't have as much paracord to use on the heel knot to cover up any gaps. So don't push it off of the heel knot foundation, just keep it just below that. Now when you're pulling this tight, don't pull super tight, just get it uh, nice and snug. And after we finish this, we're going to roll the knot just like we rolled the whip. And that's going to help it look even nicer. And this is one of the things that I experiment with a lot, choosing the size of my heel knot foundations to allow me to do more or less passes on different types of knots. Um, you know, if I find that with some knots, uh, there's some gaps that are still visible, but there's not quite enough room for another whole pass, then... Uh, you know, I need to make the heel knot foundation a little smaller. So, uh, make sure that, you know, as you experiment with those, when you find something that works, write down the measurements or something for that.
Alright, so I pulled all the slack out of this, and I'm seeing some gaps still. Now depending on how small they are, you might be able to adjust it and roll it out. Um, sometimes I, you know, might make the heel knot foundation slightly larger uh, than I wanted to. Um, I think I might have to do a third pass for this. So I'm just going to cut a foot and a half of paracord and start it, just feed it in and continue to do the third pass. So I'll have four loose ends of paracord that I'll singe in the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'll skip over that to where we singe off the ends here. Alright, so uh, I made a third pass because I accidentally made the foundation a little too big. So I just got a scrap piece of paracord laying around. It's a little bit smaller, but uh, I kind of like the look of the accent in it. So anyways, once you have all your passes done, uh, make sure, again, you pull, you go through the knot, pulling all the slack out. Don't pull it extremely tight, but get it nice and snug. So now we're just going to cut the ends and melt them in. So just give each strand one last pull. And you're going to cut them, uh, leaving maybe about a millimeter. Okay, something like that. <clears throat> Just get it down as close as you can. Just melt them in and if you have a wood burner uh, that would be the better way to do it um, I don't have one right now at the moment but when I get the chance I do it's, it does a neater job there's too much wind here <laughs> all right so I just uh, cut and singed the ends in so when you melt it, just melt it some, lick your finger and push it in a little so it doesn't go anywhere. So now we're just going to uh, roll the knot. Don't put too much pressure on. You don't need very much at all. And just kind of tap the head down. And I like to take the edge of the board and... Um, get on this side too just to kind of push the edges into the heel knot foundation all right so this heel knot is complete all that's left to do now is to make a crack or unattach it all right so to make this cracker um, I'm gonna use nylon thread Again, you can use paracord gut. So, if you're using the paracord gut, um, just pull about uh, maybe three feet. You're going to need about a three foot section just to give you a little bit of room for error. Um, so, then what you're going to do is you're just going to cut it and you'll twist it. So, um, if you have hemostats, this job will be a lot easier, but if not, then what you'll do is you'll just take the one end of your paracord gut or thread and wrap it around a pencil or something, just like that, and then pinch it and put the other end in a vise or hold it down um, with your foot or something, and you'll just spin it until it uh, starts to wrap up on itself real tight, so when you just let it in slightly it starts to twist up so if you have paracord gut you'll do it like that but with nylon thread you're gonna wanna double it and uh, again do about three feet and then double that over so you have two strands and then you'll actually do it two more times so when you're finished you should have 
um, four strands of your thread and it's all gonna be three feet long so you can see here there's four there four strands running three feet long like that so grab the end that has the two loose ends there should be one loop and two loose ends take your hemostats if you have them otherwise just uh, do like I told you before with a pencil and then you're going to just grab the other end hold it up and just spin just give it a few spins uh, just like with the pencil spin it until um, it starts to wrap up on itself so I'm holding it kind of tight but when I start to let go it starts to twist like that so that's where you want it so grab the middle in your teeth and then bring the two ends together and then you can let go of this end hold on to this end <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to unclip these holding both ends and just clip it towards the end so we can work with it. So you have both of the loose ends here and the twisted portion. Go ahead and, uh, you know, get all this out. You can untwist it some and just work with it. Alright, so what we're going to do next is measure out um, 9 inches. So from the end of the twisted loop, go to 9 inches and clip it there. Now if you don't have hemostats, what you're going to do, just tie a simple overhand knot at 9 inches. If you do have hemostats, we're going to tie... Uh, a knot that works better for crackers called a small blood knot. So let me zoom in here. Alright, so separate these two, these into two separate strands. You should have two twisted strands each made up of four strands so I'm gonna take this either one bring it across the hemostats and then I'm going to go back behind the twisted portion of the cracker just like that and then loop it through once just like we're gonna do a simple overhand knot just like that but then we're going to do it one more time. So go through again. So what you should have is this twisted around twice, kind of like a vine. And then after that, you're just going to pull this tight. Make sure all the strands get tightened. And then, once you've done that, then you should have the knot right behind the hemostats here. So take all the loose ends, including the one you just pulled here, pinch this tight, take the hemostats out, and then pull it all together like this. So now from the knot, measure out two inches and cut it. So for the cracker we have a 9 inch twisted portion and a 2 inch tassel. So to put it on the whip um, there's two ways. One, just uh, untwist this. Take your fall. Just slip it over like that. So you look like this. 
and then just tie a simple half hitch knot just like that and usually just one of these holds it on but if your cracker pops off then you can do two half hitch knots that'll hold it but the way I like to attach crackers um, I use a fid or something like that so if you have one you can go ahead and do that so um, I, I'm just gonna use this little pick here if you have anything similar to this it'll work so take the end of your fall and I'm gonna do maybe a millimeter back from the tip and you'll just punch a hole in it all right so make sure it goes through like that slide it up to enlarge the hole and then you're just gonna lightly melt it leaving your fit in and this is just so that um, when we take this off the inner strands of the paracord won't uh, unravel themselves and close up the hole. So once you've done that, just take this out and you should have a tiny hole there. Now right before you take this out, make sure your cracker is ready. Twist it to a very fine point and then we're just going to poke it through as fast as we can. And depending on how wide your fit is, this will work better. I find that a lot of times when I punch through one way, I have to go through the other. And then singe it again. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Alright, so I've melted this a second time, so it should go through easier now. There. So now that it's through, I'm just going to untwist the end. And then, when you've done that, just take your end of the cracker, pull it through, and make sure this loop goes over the cracker and the end of the fall as well. And then just pull it. So it should look something like that. So this micro whip is now done, so we'll just go ahead and test crack it. Alright, so this snake whip is now done and we're ready to test crack it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you'd like to see more whip making tutorials, uh, just let me do know down in the comments uh, if there's any specific tutorials on certain types of whips or whatever you want to see. Just let me know about that too. So let's see how this does for slicing some dandelions. Well, it cracks and it cuts, so now I just need to work on my accuracy with it. So, uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.